Okay, so I've got the drawing in AutoCAD coming together reasonably well, at least with enough for me to bring that into Revit and start building up what I need there. And Revit is going to be the hub, it's going to be the, the program we use to manage uh, everything and coordinate all the different resources we have and then hopefully produce some decent output. Uh, and so going into to Revit now that I've already got open, it's going to work with the stuff out of the box um, using the project templates that come up uh, when you start the program on the welcome screen there. And you can see there the architectural template is the one I'd recommend you should always use. But notice how it says default OZ ENU. Now I'm just going to go to the main menu and then choose new project. And if I go to architectural template from the list there, that would be the same as choosing architectural template on the welcome screen there. If I go to browse, then you'll see the file names of these templates. And so you can see it there again, default OZ ENU, which means default Australian end user. And if you are setting up the program on your own computer, you need to make doubly sure that it's downloaded the correct templates. So you may have seen when you install the program that it needs to reconnect after downloading the program. It'll need to connect again when it's running the setup files uh, to download extra content. And you'll know whether or not it's worked because if you go to start a new file and it brings up level one, as your open view, uh, your first view, or you see that it's set to, might, might even be set to inches, feet and inches, then you can be pretty sure it's got the American template, which it'll use if it can't find the Australian ones. And um, it's a common problem people have, even if your internet connection's working, uh, it'll sometimes struggle to download the extra things. So if you have that problem, I'll get the extra content files for you as well, so you can just copy those and put them onto your own computer. Um, and so it's not just the templates you'll get, you can see here there's got an Australian folder for all these extra templates, but you'll get extra li library files and uh, family templates as well. You need all those things to work properly with the um, Australian standards that they build into these files. So just keep an eye out for that. But you can be pretty sure, usually if you click on architectural template, that you'll get the Australian one. So again, a little way of making sure, ground floor is the lowest level, and we're working with metric, you can see there, metric scales. Um, so, now I want the um, AutoCAD file imported into... Uh, the, the web file I've just set up. So I'm going to save that file just to make sure it's got my latest changes in AutoCAD. Now I'm going to do something you'll, you'll get used to before long whenever you have a class with me. I do this a lot, duplicating views. So have you done this before? Yeah. Good, good. Okay. So hopefully you're used to that. Um, do you know which views you shouldn't duplicate? Sorry? Elevation. Exactly, elevations and sections. Okay, any other views, Why duplicate as much as you want. Because you get duplicate references. So you get an extra section line when you duplicate them. So you'll have two on top of it, each other. Um, so I'll go into that more later. But basically, duplicate plans and 3D views as much as you want. But just be careful with the others. So, uh, so I'm, I'm not duplicating the ground floor. I want to duplicate my site plan. I might even open it first by double clicking. And then I'm going to right click on the view name site and then go to duplicate view, duplicate. Don't need to duplicate the detailing here because there isn't any. So then I'm going to right click on my new view, site copy one, go to rename and we'll call it site DWG. Go to insert and then link K. What's DWG? Ah, uh, join, AutoCAD join file. So that's the format you can see down here. Do that oh, yeah. right, so now I'm going to browse and find the file I've saved in AutoCAD. There it is. And then the most important setting when you import or link 2D AutoCAD files, I think you should always turn this option on, current view only. Because if you don't turn that on, you'll see it in all of your views. So you'll see 2D line work in your 3D views. 
or even elevations, you'll see these flat plates of line work messing up your elevation. So just turn that option on when it's a 2D view, and uh, it usually works well. So now I'm just going to click OK. Uh, oh, sorry, no, I'm not. I'm going to go to change an option here. Just choose one of the manual options. Doesn't really matter which one. Origin will do. And that just means it won't be pinned. So if I click OK, or click Open, sorry. Now, once it's started importing it, I think these computers are going to struggle with some of these things, but uh, they're still better than the standard TAFE issue, but not, uh, not quite workstations. So let's just give it a minute. Okay, so that's, that's come in now. So I click to place it, and now I can pick it up and move it because it isn't pinned. If you can't move it, it's, it's usually because it's pinned. So you'll see up there, you have the pin icon, and then above that, unpin if you need to. Right, so now you can see it's big. We expect it to be big, we're working on a big building. So I'm going to click and drag to move this. And uh, so you can see then that my image has come in, with the uh, with the line work, and that still might be useful. I might want to see the satellite image in uh, in Revit as well, but it's becoming a bit difficult to see uh, everything that I need in the one view. And Revit doesn't have all the options to control that display uh, that uh, AutoCAD does. It's got centre, back, and bring to front, but they don't work quite as well as the uh, options you have. Which I'll show you in AutoCAD, you might not have seen. Draw order, you have these, which do similar things, but you also have layers and, and things like that in AutoCAD. So what I thought I'd show you is some ways of getting some different displays here. Uh, so I've positioned that roughly where it should be, and I can see the line work now to position my um, uh, site as I drag it and just get it in relation to the elevation views. So these are the elevations, I'm sure you're used to those, and the section line. I'm still going to move them in a second, but I still want to position the site uh, roughly correctly in, in relation to those. Okay, so I've got that, and uh, I'm going to duplicate the view again. This time I'll go to duplicate with detailing to make sure it copies the, uh, the link. And uh, I'm going to rename this one and call it site, uh, let's say, um, satellite. And then duplicate that again. And we'll call it, so I'm using duplicate with detailing. Just make sure you realise there. And site um, contours. Okay, so now I can use layers to control the visibility of things. So VV is the shortcut. Or click on the edit button next to visibility graphics overrides in your properties panel and then you can go to imported categories and you'll see then that the layers from AutoCAD will come into Revit. So it's a really useful option and there, so this is my DWG one, I'm going to turn off the image layers there, both of them. So now I can see my line work. I'm going to go to the contours one, probably have an idea what I'm going to do here, same thing, go to Visibility graphics overrides, imported categories, and turn off the satellite image. I could probably leave the line work on for now, um, unless it gets in the way, so I'll just leave that and uh, click OK. And I can see then. Oh, and actually, my image file is set to be transparent, so that won't show um, until I go back to AutoCAD and change that setting. So, so I'll have to go and do that. Um, I'll show you another trick you can use, though, to. Um, to get that into Revit, which, which is the handy option as well. So uh, let's just go to the satellite one though, and here I might go in and uh, turn off a few more layers. So I can just turn off most of these other layers here. Okay, but the point there is that it's all linked, so if I move it, they'll all go together even though they're in showing in different views. 
Uh, now what I might do is just see if turning off the line work here will make a difference. I don't think it will, but I'm just going to make sure. No. Okay, so, so again, it's because of the, um, the image there being, being transparent. So let's go back. So that's the border of it there, I'm fairly sure. Oh, that's my page border. No, sorry. So the uh, the linking just isn't working properly here. Let's just have a look. It should be coming through. Maybe the format, actually. So let's have a look at the index. Okay, so, uh, so what I'm going to do back in AutoCAD. There are, there are a few workarounds you could use here. Uh, you could uh, try a different format. This is a GIF file, and uh, I think that might be the reason that it's not linking through properly. But um, it could also be because of the transparency option. So I'll first try turning that off. Let's see if I <laughs> save that now. Back into Revit, and then go to Manage Links, CAD formats, select the drawing file, and then reload. Click OK. No. Okay, so it's not that. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure it is the format. So you could try changing the GIF file into a JPEG or something, and that would probably resolve it. But again, another solution, again, would be to um, simply mark that location, which I'll do now. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool. Just to mark on the, uh, just to make sure I'm using the right layer, I'll do it on the same layer as the uh, contours, just draw a rectangle around that frame, and save the file, back into Revit, manage links, CAD formats, find the file, click reload, click OK, and there you can see is the border of my image file, and now I can simply go to image here in Revit, and select that file. Um, I'll do it from the same place you are. Okay, so this might be a good bit of a vision for you scaling in, in Revit. I know you've probably all done it before, but it doesn't hurt just to see it again quickly. So I'm going to use the move tool, make sure I snap exactly to the uh, endpoint there on the corner, and then snap to the endpoint in um, on the uh, rectangle that I've drawn. Notice how it's telling me nearest. So it might you might think it is on the endpoint, but it's not. It's on the intersection, 45 degrees from the corner, which is not what I want. Now here I can try moving it over, it's still not doing it. So do you know what to do if that happens? Tab, exactly. Tab's your best friend in Revit. So that should cycle through the different options you have for snapping. Um, but then another option is the shortcut for snap to endpoint, which is SE, which will force it to look for endpoints only. And then I can easily just click on that point. So a couple of different options there, but yeah, it's good if you remember Tab. That is probably the best option key in Revit. Uh, so now I want to scale it using just what I have on the screen, the scale tool. Simply snap to the same endpoint to pick up my base measurement, then to the uh, other end of that image, the other corner, and then come across to the frame that I've drawn. Just making sure it's the right one. Yep, that's it. There we go. And now I'll try using centre back, and it should go underneath my line work that's coming from. Right again. So that should be a pretty good setup. Now, if I select my um, AutoCAD file, I can pin it, because we don't want that moving around accidentally, and same with the image file. Pin it. Okay, so that's a really good setup to have, uh, and now start building up the um, site features in Revit. So, just quickly to get you started there, you've all used topo surfaces before, I'm sure, Yep, good, good. Okay, so let's go to the site DWG, and that will give me an idea of the area of my uh, topo. 
and uh, let's just bring up the image on its own. Alright, so it's good just to have an idea in your head what the main heights are and have you, when you've done topo surfaces in the past, worked with the raw levels or did you turn them into relative levels or reduced levels? So you might have called them reduced levels but they may, we'll see here, you can see they're all labelled RL um, and that's, that's pretty standard actually. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's relative, so um, it's fine if you if you work that way. Then you just need to to know that from the beginning. So uh, you probably know these are uh, AHD levels. So that's the raw height, basically from sea level. And uh, so, what's the lowest level there? Do you think? Thirteen. That's what I can see. I can't see any lower than that. Okay, so so we can say that's that's about the lowest point, and then we've got um, maybe eighteen and a half is the highest, and then some roof levels that are higher than that. So thirteen. So that's the starting point. All right. So back into the um, probably the south elevation. Then you can just move the levels that you have as a starting point, particularly ground floor, that's the important one because it might not be obvious, but all of those views I've been working with, site and all the ones I've duplicated, are, are linked to the ground floor level. And you can see that over here in properties. I've just selected the site view and you can see that the associated level is ground floor. You can't change that. So when you move these levels, you're moving uh, the, the height at which that, that view is going to be taken. So I'm just going to select both of them with the crossing window, or you can go right around them and select them with a normal window. Click the move button, and then move in, in uh, the vertical direction, 90 degrees, and type in 13,000. Now I like to make a new level for the ground floor, so I'll call this one, instead of ground floor, ground line, or just ground. But sometimes people think when they see ground that it's ground floor. So by calling it ground line, it's clear. We're talking about the ground itself, the earth, not, not some floor level. So yes, uh, always to rename corresponding views. Do you ever say no to that one? You always say yes. No, that's right. You always say yes there. Crazy to say no. It just messes things up. So yes, always to that one. And then... Uh, just a few other things to tidy up. Back into one of the site views where we can see everything. Okay, so do you know about the um, the view reference that you have in your elevation symbol? You know, you've got the arrow there that's separate to the actual symbol. So the symbol is one thing, the arrow is another thing, or the arrow is the view. So it's a good idea to move them together at first. So if you make a window left to right around both of them, you'll see there's two selected properties there. And then with the arrows on the keyboard, I'm just going to nudge that so that it is above the site. Right, and then the same with all the others, making a window left to right and nudging just that, that the sides probably don't need to move that much actually. Okay, so that's a good setup. So once we start drawing the building, we'll actually see it in the elevation views. And then I can start putting in some of the basic settings for my topo. Uh, and uh, so I'll do that on the um, Massing and Site tab. And so they're going to go to Topo Surface. And switch to my Site Contours view. Now, 
some reason I can't see the I can't see the thirteen that I saw before. Ah, oh, fifteen. Where, where did I get thirteen? So yeah, it was fifteen, wasn't it? Is the lowest one, not thirteen. Yeah, I thought there was a 13. Oh, yeah, sorry, up here. Okay, that's right, yeah. Okay, so we'll do that. It's good to have this, this whole area defined. Yeah, okay, so uh, here it is. Yep, yeah. okay, so so with place point, I'll just go through and start typing in those measurements. So 13,000. And then click a point. We might end up moving the site level a bit higher, the, uh, which is the ground line. But uh, I'll show you quickly what will happen if, if we do that now. Okay, so 13,500. Let's put a few more levels in. I'm not going to do all of these contours. I'm showing you how to do that. Just go in and put the, um, those values in, 15,500, and then click quite a few points along those contour lines. Uh, so I'll just go and put in the maximum levels, 18,000 for the corner down here. And then... 18,500 for this one. And so it's hiding my contours uh, in the image. So I can go to wireframe there to see through that again. And then, of course, you can keep refining that topo surface. Uh, so let's just say do a few in the middle, 16,500. Uh, as you go and add more points. Well, there, yeah, it doesn't matter if you go outside the original shape. Okay, so you need a fair few lines to define these contour properly. No, sorry, a fair few points to define the contour lines properly. So maybe on every dash, it's probably a good one. Yeah, it won't do that many though, so that'll do. So I'm just going to finish that now. Show you what will happen if you have your site higher, and you probably will want that. In other words, you want the ground line higher. And so you can see already that uh, we're getting a ground line in the south elevation now because I've got the uh, topo surface there being cut, uh, and it's cut fairly close to... So, I was, okay, okay, this one. so it's cut fairly close to our, uh, where our car park's finishing. So maybe actually I'll move that, uh, move that down. It's going to go out a bit further to make a window there. there we are. So I'll just move that elevation down below this dash line. But even so, it's cut fairly low which isn't relating very well to where I'm saying the ground line is there. And the reason is that I made it 13,000, I probably should have made it 15,000. Because 13,000 is the lowest point on the topo surface, but 15,000 is the lowest point on the side. So I'm going to go to move and bring that up 2,000. Maybe even more. Okay, so that's still not high enough. Looking back here, let's have a look at it. So 17 actually is, is more like it. And so, yeah, so it's 15 down on this end. So that's, uh, actually, we've got, to, we've got to make a compromise. So that's probably better. So I'll go to the north elevation. And that's pretty good now. So ground line there is pretty close to where it's cutting. And then it slopes up from there. But we're saying our minimum ground line is that high. So that's okay. But I'll show you one final thing before I give some time to work on this. And well, okay, probably it breaks in as well. Select my topo surface. Edit surface. And... I can see the points here. If I go and place a point that's lower, so that's 13,000. Let's go and put in some points. We might want to have some even further out to go under these, these buildings up here. Because we've got to probably take it up that high. So uh, let's, we're just going to have to guess what that height is. So it might be uh, 11,000. Place some points. And, well, we're lucky. It's still within range. But do you know what to do if you can't see the points? And you will probably reach a point where you can't see them anymore. 
Do you know how you control the depth of the view? How far down and how far up it looks in a plan? Oh, yeah, exactly, the view range. range, that's the one. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So, yeah. Okay, so if you don't know, you can get to it even in sketch mode like this. Just go into properties and you can switch to the plan or the view properties there and then you can still get to view range if you need to change that. Okay, so here it's okay, but sometimes you need to take that down further. Alright, so that's it and uh, I'll uh, finish that. Right, so try and get a start on your topo surface before long and um, then you'll see I'll go further before long and, and talk about using subregions which you'll see will be far easier than uh, if you've tried to do complicated subregions before in Revit uh, because we've got the line work set out in AutoCAD and we can just pick those lines and quickly get the roads and the other things done. So it should make your life a lot easier. Mm -hmm. I guess I better finish recording. <laughs>